Okay guys, um, the Commodore is now gone and this is the rig that has uh, replaced the faithful Commodore. Um, gone to a full drive of course as you can see. Uh, mainly it was due to work um, rather than anything else and the it was the right time um, to move on the Commodore. Um, got good money for it, uh, love the car, um, but just wanted something a little bit more practical and to start getting into doing the full drive side of things again, as well as, like I said, um, being useful for work purposes as well. So um, this is a 2022 um, Azuzu D-Max X-Terrain. So the top spec, um, and basically I ordered it in uh, July um, 2021 and it had arrived just before um, Christmas so uh, actually on Christmas Eve so it was a it was a nice um, Christmas present to um, get just the um, just the day before Christmas which was a nice surprise because it wasn't due to arrive until um, February so I'm um, really happy about that um, today just going to take you through um, a few of the modifications um, that I've done and um, yeah we'll, we'll kick it off and take it from there all right so I'll probably start with uh, it's probably the most controversial um, modification that I've done amongst the, all of my friends mates um, and people that um, I bump into and and talk um, about um, is the wheel color uh, choice so this is the KMC um, Impact O724. It's a brand new um, rim that's been brought out by KMC. Um, uh, I was going to go for their matte bronze, um, but because they're so new, um, it was hard to get them in Australia. So I decided to um, get a hold of a black set that um, Ross at IDBWA had sitting around. Um, and we ended up painting it um, in a gold pearl sandy taupe colour. Um, it wasn't exactly the colour I was um, hoping that would turn out, but I think it's not too bad. Um, different, divides opinion. Um, so let me know what you think of the colour combination because it was not quite what I was going for. But as it's been on the vehicle now for um, some weeks, I've actually grown to quite like it. Um, it's different. Um, it's different to any other sort of color that you're seeing in terms of the matte bronzes, the blacks, the machine finish. So it does divide opinion, but it's a conversation piece nevertheless. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've quite, quite grown fond of the, um, of the design of those now. Um, went with the Maxxis Razor uh, MTs, and they're a little bit, little bit of noise, but not horrible for a for a mud terrain tire. Um, and yeah, it's early days, so I can't really tell you too much on the um, wear side of things. Um, and of course, um, as overall, it's been lifted. It's been lifted three and a half inches on the front and two inches on the rear and um, what we've done is we've done um, we've done Dobinson's MRR kit uh, on the front and back and we've combined that with Iron Man uh, upper control arms and we've also done a PSR um, diff drop to accommodate that um, even though the diff drops there um, with these IFS front ends you can still see that the um, that the CV joint itself is on a bit of an angle, so that can be a concern. There's a cat. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that is a little bit of a concern for the future. Um, but I've taken it for several four -wheel drives, and it hasn't been too much of an issue um, so far. Um, but I know that the CVs on these are actually quite prone to uh, being fragile. So we just have to um, wait and see what the outcome is there. I'll just come under and I'll show you the back as well. Um, I've just left the settings on standard so far 
and the ride quality is actually on the road in the medium setting which is just halfway house um, on the on the Dobinson settings and the ride quality on the road is next to stock um, I was very impressed with it especially with the tires that are on it and the lift that's on it um, very very impressed with the road handling and the ride quality and uh, anyone that jumps in this thing um, when I go and chuck it around the corner on the street um, they're very impressed with how flat the car stays throughout the corner so the suspension itself um, if you're looking at you know is it worth going to a remote res kit if you do your research um, you know from my feelings and what I like in a car it just gives you that adjustment and adjustability and you get what you pay for at the end of the day so um, if you've got you know another thousand odd dollars that you're considering um, throwing at suspension for my mind um, you need to look at going to a remote res kit um, just the the amount of flexibility that it offers um, if you're someone fussy like myself um, it's gonna you know handle all the tuning needs that you require um, no it's not necessary for everyone to have it but in my situation it was a you know no-brainer for me to look at do using something like this because I like to play with things and feel the changes um, in the car and the vehicle um, the second modification um, was the um, fabulous fabrications um, four inch intake um, why I choose the fabulous fabrications unit uh, is because it um, was basically able to mate to the factory air box and you don't have to do any modifications to the factory air box at all um, it took me about five hours to install it overall so I just got a um, recept saw at my work and I spent the weekend and just cut it in here and fitted it. It was a little bit fiddly. Um, you could always use a hand to, to do these sorts of tasks. But other than that, um, it was pretty simple install. Um, and obviously um, doesn't really add any performance um, at all. But if you're doing a four wheel drive, you can do a, some sort of intake. So this is the style I liked on the vehicle. I like the shorter entry. Um, you can get two options. So you get a short entry or you can get a, an entry that's a bit longer that comes in around here. I just like the minimalist look of the um, short entry snorkel. So that's what I went for there. Um, now, probably another mod. I went for the, uh, well, I'm going for the mall crawler look. So I don't plan on at any stage or any time that I don't think I'll do a front bull ball. Um, that's just my personal choice. Um, you know someone might find that you know a bull bar is necessary and it especially is if you're doing big trips i'll only be doing you know several like four or five big trips a year so it's not something that for me i feel that was necessary and i like the look of the factory front bar i think it looks tough and aggressive as it is so i'm not going to be uh changing it anytime soon um so what i did is i went online um and i ended up finding trail bait off-road and they do a specific kit made for the Isuzu D-Max in the factory front bar, and that's supplied with a steady ST4K um, twin row um, light bar. Um, on the latest trip that we we did, um, tested it out, and it worked worked awesome. So um, you know, can't can't complain too much there. It does everything you need, and no, the grill does not affect its performance in throwing light out at all, so you won't even um, notice the difference there with that. Uh, next one was the um, GME um, XRS 370 um, that I've installed as a CB radio. So I mounted the, um, I mounted the antenna here and I was using, um, that's a Vogue Industries um, plate. If I've got one criticism of the plate that Vogue's come up with, it's that it is a stainless steel plate, but it's probably a little bit too, um, it's a little bit too flimsy for what you would consider strong enough. So it does flex around and bounce around a little bit. So if I was um, Vogue Industries, I'd try and look at doing a bit of a thicker plate there just to, um, support that a bit more um sorry sorry guys the car's really dirty because i haven't cleaned it from the 
trip just last weekend. Yeah, I've claimed the outside but not got to the inside. Um, yeah, so what I did with the XRS 370 is I passed through up under here somewhere. Where is it? It's pretty hard to see, guys, so excuse me. But I've passed the wires through. There's a little grommet hole there. So I just fed... I just fed the wires in through the bonnet and then through the through the little um, grommet that's up under here and then I've just fed it and run it up under the dash here and I've put the main unit so that with the main unit I'm not going to show you an install video or anything like that but just for your reference there's plenty of them that you can look on online um, you can just take this center piece, center console piece out where your cup holders are and then there's an abundance of space under your um, glove box and that's where I've installed the main unit um, of the XRS um, 370, so you can't even see it, so it's nice, neat insole. And then I've just got this pass-through cable here from GME. They make them for the D-Max and BT50, and I've just popped that there. Now, this was in this position, and there was a free one there. I've swapped it to the front, so it's nice and easy to um, just clip in um, and put out of the way. So you just clip, basically you just clip that in, um, and then you've just got got your handheld um, radio piece there and then when you're not using it you can just um, throw it away in the glove box so I don't keep it on the seat I just usually put it in the glove box the glove box is full of shit so I didn't want to show you the the amount of um, stuff that was in there um, yeah so that's basically the only real modification that I've done um, internally um, what else have we done to this? I don't think there's too many more um, mods, really. It's just all the all the basics and essentials. Down the track, the other modifications that I'll probably do is I'll probably do a tune because it definitely needs it now with the um, bigger tyres on there. Um, that's sucking a little bit of power. Not as much as what I thought, but it nevertheless is sucking power out of it. So um, a tune is definitely necessary. I'm not going to do a, a plug and play tune or anything like that i've had bad experiences in the past with that sort of stuff with other diesel vehicles so i'll be getting a full custom tune done um i'm not sure of any places yet to really go i'm just in my early research stage um and i'll probably do a, a three inch um exhaust but i'll probably put a muffler in it um, i don't want it too loud or anything like that so just so i can breathe a little bit better but apart from that I probably won't do too much more to this thing, to be honest. Um, it's pretty much where I where I want it. Um, I want to see how the springs in this front end uh, level out a bit more, um, because I, I might go up a wee bit in the front, but not too much more. Because keeping in mind the CVs on this are, um, are prone to snapping. Um, at the wrong angle so and then that might be just another um maintenance sort of thing that i do down the track maybe i might do an intercooler as well we'll see how that all sort of pans out down the track you never know um, but for now that's uh, sort of the vehicle um hope you enjoyed this one um, and then i'll be probably bringing out some more videos on some things that i like about it some things that i don't like um, obviously there's way more things that I like about this vehicle than I don't like but there is a few bugbears that I do want to get off my chest because um, Isuzu need to sort it out or, and, and I suppose Mazda to a degree but it's Isuzu that is the main platform that this um, car is derived from so yeah there's a few things on there that really grind my gears and um, when I've been driving sometimes, I'm like, I'm driving this straight to the dealer to trade it in because, uh, yeah, it's quite frustrating. But anyway, um, nevertheless, it is a great vehicle. I am happy with my decision. Um, and, yeah, interior-wise, fantastic vehicle. Um, but, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.